Oh my god, someone's falling. I have no idea who this is, and for all I know, he more than deserves to plummet to his death, but still. Isn't it great how we then find out that he wasn't in any danger because it wasn't him that activated the parachute, it was automatic? Also, let's be honest, after the way he landed, he should not be able to move his legs at all. Kind of like how later in the movie, this trap was not made to kill, it was made to maim. And then, when the doctor actually does walk, he just has a little bit of a limp. Was anybody else annoyed by how every other line was, this is what we do to people where I come from, and the predators are doing it too? Okay, we get it, you're horrible, horrible people. Can we move on? Am I the only one who thinks that Fishburne could have been cut from the entire movie, and should have been? Think about it, if you take him out, you wouldn't have them suddenly in a safe haven away from the Predators, which, as you may remember, they get away from by attracting the fucking Predators. It was boring that suddenly, oh, you'll be safe here, and then Brody, yet again, does something without talking to any of the others, and attracts the Predators. The whole thing with Fishburne's character about, oh, he's been there for so long that he's gone insane. That I'm okay with, but then how can he survive if he's insane? And the thing with him having an invisible friend, come on, it wasn't funny. I survive by taking what I can when I can. Which makes it weird that I'm kind of pudgy. No offense intended to anyone overweight, just saying, didn't make a lot of sense. Also, if his part was excised from the movie, you wouldn't have fanboys trying to come up with explanations for how the hell that mask can apparently cloak your entire body. From, you know, when he decloaks and standing there with a BFG. Seriously, I can buy it being in the wrist computer, but how is the mask supposed to make the entire body invisible? I mean, the way I see it, the mask is for the different vision modes, and to supply them with whatever it is they breathe, because they apparently don't like oxygen so much. I really love the Asian dude, the way he was so smooth, you know, his motions when you first see that he is indeed armed, you know, just he gets, you know, the head motion from Adrian, and then he just opens the jacket and reaches in, slowly gets the gun out, and just, you can tell he knows exactly what he's doing. And he has a wicked cool gun. I love Berettas. I kind of do wish that he didn't speak at all. And if they had to have him say anything, especially about the sword, that it, you know, be like... Hattori Hanzo steel. Something like that. Unfortunately, when I mention the katana, I also have to go into that ridiculous fucking jousting. Okay, I love swordplay. If two characters pick up a sword each, or two each, and start fighting, I'm not necessarily going to say, wait, neither of them have any idea how to fight. If such is true, I might just sit back and enjoy the crap out of it. But in this, it wasn't so much a sword fight as jousting. They move past each other and hit the other's blade with their blade. And they do this a bunch of times, and finally they both die. How about how fucking stupid that huge wrist blade on that predator is? I'm sorry, you cannot use that for fencing, and you would not have any use for that in hunting. It's so long you can barely use it for anything. It makes sense for a sword to be long. You can move your wrist and manipulate the direction the blade will go. But when it's attached to here, you can only do so much. Where does it even go when he retracts it, if he can retract it? Into his arm? Has he had it surgically altered so that there's room for it? Why the fuck did they bother introducing that predator when it dies like five, maybe ten minutes after we first even see it? In general, what was the point? Why three predators? The death scenes weren't that good. I mean, the first one, you blow up with Nikolai, and yes, I get the irony of now it's the humans using suicide bombings as a weapon against the Predators. That's okay, I get it. I don't personally find it clever. 
and I certainly don't want to see it twice. Why did the second one even survive it? Why was the explosion so fucking huge the first time? Why would you animate so much of a huge fireball when it looks that unconvincing? It was so obvious where the CGI stopped and the actual pyrotechnics took over. Most of the death in this was anticlimactic. Very little of anything in the movie had any dramatic effect. Were we seriously supposed to believe that he had entered the ship? We didn't see it, and then it gets blown Of course he was still on the ground. And as for it blowing up, I guess the Predators are just putting bombs everywhere now. One of the mistakes this makes that AVP also made is you do not have a Predator and a human working together. They can't lose their mystique. They can't become approachable. It's fine to have them have honor, but if we're not their enemy, then they're not. I love how Brody tries to talk to it. Okay. Don't mind this knife that I stole from fucking Crocodile Dundee. I'm gonna cut you down, and then you're gonna take me to Earth. Earth. Seriously. He pulls out his fucking knife, stands in front of it, growls a few lines in a fairly threatening manner, and then he expects it to understand that he's going to help it. Fortunately, it's not very difficult to free it because he just has to smack on the side there with the knife once, and that was apparently all that was holding it up. But the Predator, of course, starts by grabbing his throat. Also gotta love how after he's freed it, it has to, you know, put all the stuff back on and, you know, show off a little bit. It couldn't just, you know, do the bare essentials and then ready the ship, then put the rest of the stuff on. Okay, dude, I'm gonna take care of your ride in just a sec. Gonna check my messages. I am quite relieved that they didn't have the Predator do sign language in this one. Did anyone else notice how sloppy these predators are? I'm sorry, but someone would notice a death row inmate missing. I maybe by at least some of the other guys, because they were apparently alone when they were captured. And then there's the blatant inconsistency with how the first half of the movie or so, they're stalking and hunting using alien hounds, which are decent, I guess, and that high-tech Falcon bullshit, which is fucking ridiculous. And then the latter half, they're just slaughtering. How about the time the Predator tears the spinal cord and the skull out of the serial killer, in spite of the fact that it didn't so much hunt him and kill him, as much as just kill him. Or when Topher Grace is lying there, already dying, it just goes over, okay, you're gonna need a stab in the back. Seriously, why did Brody give him such a fast death? This is something I do not understand. Typically in Hollywood, she's apparently going to have a slow, painful death, but he gets off with this really fast one. It's not that much of a punishment. It might hurt, but it's only gonna hurt for seconds or maybe minutes. Give him a taste of his own medicine. Use the incredibly obvious set up toxin on him instead. Also stupid how Topher Grace speaks in the I'm clearly a psychopath voice after he's revealed himself to be that. Why did he reveal himself to be that at that time? What did he expect the Predators to do? She was his best chance of him surviving getting here among them. I'm normal. Um, dude, everyone around you has killed plenty of people. Shortly after landing and overcoming his crippling fear that he may have crashed onto Lost Island, where he will have to remain for months, discovering more and more bizarre mysteries, Adrian and the others start shooting. Not really at anything, just shooting. Some at each other, then at the hounds. They don't really hit much of anything. The Russian dude fires a minigun consistently at one of the hounds, and only near the end does he start to hit it. I'm sorry, but at that range, to not be hitting 